Hey students, in this video, I'm going to go over the rules of Algebra 1 for um, radical expressions, and then there'll be a part 2 for you to practice um, the Algebra 2 version or level of the back problems of this paper. Okay, so here, what you need, really need to understand is just a lot of rules, and, and you could just apply all these rules in any order possible. So let's just learn the rules. What are the rules? And the rules are just shortcuts that mathematicians have proven to be true all the time. So one of the rules, it's the converting to a radical. You have something raised to a power of a fraction. And what that means is that you need to look at that and say, oh, I can rewrite this as a radical. And the denominator of this radical uh, of this exponent with a fraction, we are going to put right here as a root. And then the numerator will go either on the inside with that base of A, or it could also be on the outside. So those are two options. So that's one rule. Another thing is going backwards. So let's say you're given something of a root raised to another power. So you need to recall that that power could also be inside. And then, if that is true, we can rewrite this as a fraction exponent. So that will be the denominator is your root. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And your numerator is your other exponent inside. So this is just the same rule, just going from one to the other, and then from the other back to where you started. So those are two already. Another rule is what happens when you have a base with an exponent and it's multiplied times another base with another exponent. What this is saying is that you are going to recognize that they are the same base, and because you're multiplying them, you're going to add the exponents. So that's another rule. Another rule will be what happens if you're dividing instead of multiplying. So if you have a base to an exponent and the same base to another exponent, and you're dividing both of those, you recognize that is the same base. So you can simply say, oh, I can just subtract my exponents. Another rule is power to a power, which means if you have something raised to a power and it's raised to another power, you need to say, oh, I can just multiply these. So that's what that other rule says. And this, there's anchor chart in the classroom that shows these rules. I just want you to understand what, they, what they're saying to you. Here's another rule that says, oh, I have a negative exponent. I don't want to work with the negative exponent. So then that means I need to rewrite this with a positive exponent. In order for that to happen, you need to look at your base and do the reciprocal, reciprocal of that base or in easier vocabulary, you flip it. So when you have a fraction, of course the fraction flips easily, but when you have a whole number, remember that there's a, a one as a denominator. So when you flip it, it becomes whatever you had as a base with a positive exponent now. So that's that rule. One last rule is called the zero rule. So that means that when your exponent is zero, it will always be one as an answer. So all these rules that I just explained, they are from Algebra 1. And this topic of simplifying expressions, there's no order of which one to use and when to use it first. So you just need to practice, 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 practice. And that's what the next video, part two, will have. Then we move on to the rules of Algebra 2. Okay, so this is this was just the review of the rules of Algebra 1. And then you're going to use those rules along with three more in the level of Algebra 2. So one of the rules is that if you have a root to um, a base with an exponent and the exponent on the inside is greater than the root, what you're going to do is pretty much understand that there's that many inside 
that many amount inside and you need to take out groups of that amount. So an example will be the fourth root of x to the seventh. So pretty much what this is saying is that you have the x seven times inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're multiplying them all. And we're doing the fourth root. So when you do roots, you ask yourself, do I have the same number multiply times itself four times? Well, in this case, we have a variable multiply times itself four times here. So this is a yes, this is a no. This is a yes, so that means we can take it out of the root of the radical, and we're going to write it on the outside of the radical one time, because we have one group. And whatever's left on the inside, you just put it back together and say there's three left. This is a visual representation of what happens. But the mathematical way of also doing this is rewriting this and applying the rule that we talked about here of rewriting a radical to a fraction exponent. So this, if you recall, we were going to use the root as a denominator. So this becomes 7 over 4. And this takes you back to just that simple understanding of what 7 over 4 is. 7 divided by 4. How many times does a 4 fit into the 7? And the answer is 1 time. So because it fits 1 time, you're going to write x. And then you want to think about, well, I know if it's one time, which means it removes four x's, so I have three left. What do I do with those? Well, that's where you annotate that there are three x's left. And it goes back to having the same answer. But the only difference is that this is the visual expanded way of doing it. And then this is applying the rule that Algebra 1 taught you. Okay. Another rule in Algebra 2 is understanding that you may have a coefficient attached to an, a radical, and you may be combining it, adding or subtracting it to another coefficient with the same radical. So if you recognize that these two radical expressions are exactly the same in root and radicand, which is the insight, then what you can do is just simply look at the coefficient and combine those coefficients. And then whatever answer you get, you just put it next to that root, the root and the radicand. That's what that other rule says. So here's an example. We have three square root of x plus five square root of x. And what that means is that you recognize that they're both square root of x's. So you're just pretty much annotating how many do you have. You have three of them plus five more. That means you now have eight square root of x's. And that's it. That's it for that rule. Another rule in Algebra 2 is understanding that you have a radical with a root. And then you're multiplying it to another radical with the same root. So you recognize that they're the same root. And what you're going to do now is realize, oh, maybe I could just merge these by saying I'm going to multiply with the root of whatever root you had. I'm going to multiply the inside, the radicand. So x times y. An example of this will be, for example, 3 or cubic root of 3x times cubic root of 2x. You recognize that they have the same root, and that means we need to consider merging the inside, the radicand, with the multiplication. So we're going to do cube root of 3x times 2x. And then this goes back to your basic algebra skills of 3x times 2x, which gives you 6x squared. And then it's a cube root of 6x squared. Some students were wondering if you were done or if you need to keep going. So it goes back to understanding what cube root means. You're looking for is there something in here times itself three times. So if you break this down to the primes, you have 2 times 3. And then x squared is x times x. You realize that you don't have a 2 in here three times or a 3 in here three times. 
or an X in here three times. You only have it two times. So none of these can come out of the radical because you don't have them at least three times. So it goes back to just saying this is your final answer. All right, that is it for the rules of Algebra 2. If needed, please let me know and I can make rules videos with examples for these. But technically, these are from Algebra 1 and we did examples in the classroom. And there's many videos online that will also explain these to you. But through practice is how you really learn these rules. Um, so let's just go to the next video and practice with me.